Hardware acceleration is good, right? Yes, but do you know why? That's the issue that I ran into for a long time. I knew hardware acceleration was good, but I didn't exactly know why. So in this video, I'm gonna quickly explain what hardware acceleration is, how it works, then show you a test setup using Jellyfin on a Synology NAS. And finally, we're gonna explain why a lot of Synology NAS devices do not support hardware acceleration and what you can do as an alternative if you really want to use hardware acceleration. So let's take a look at what hardware acceleration is. So hardware acceleration in the simplest of terms will convert a video format. It could be a codec, it could be a resolution, but what it will do is it will convert that into a format that can be played on whatever client device you're using. So for example, if you're using a laptop, it might support different codecs than if you're using a mobile phone. So that alone can potentially cause hardware transcoding to be required depending on which device you're using. Now, whether you know it or not, transcoding is always used. It just might not be efficient. So if you're using a mobile phone, and you go to play a video and it's not in a format that's capable of actually direct playing, what it will do is actually transcode, but it's gonna use the CPU as opposed to the GPU. So we'll get to that in a second. But what I quickly wanna show here is that there are a few types of transcoding. And the idea is that if you're direct playing a video file and there's no transcoding required, it will directly play off of the device. That means that if you implement transcoding, hardware transcoding, you're not gonna see any benefit because it's direct playing directly off of your device and you're not really doing any processing on the server. So where you get into issues is if you have to, it's really mainly if you have to transcode the file, so the video stream. Audio is easier on the CPU, at least in my experience, than video. But the idea here is that if you're, in a situation where you have to transcode, it's going to be done whether you set up hardware transcoding to use the GPU or you don't. Now, one myth is that hardware acceleration will always lead to better performance and it's just simply not true. So if you have your NAS set up and it's streaming to a TV, for example, and it never has to transcode because your TV has the correct codecs and it's in the correct uh, resolution, then you will not benefit whatsoever from hardware acceleration. So it's not something that has to be implemented for everybody. If you're direct playing, this is going to produce absolutely nothing for you. So what I wanna do is show you this in real time and show you a video file that will not transcode or doesn't have to be transcoded. And then the same video file in a format that does have to be transcoded, what it does to our Synology NAS, and then we'll go and quickly turn on hardware transcoding, and then we'll see how it plays then. So what I have here is I have my Synology NAS using Jellyfin, and I have hardware acceleration set up. This is a DS1019 Plus, it's older. Um, it's showing its age at this point. So it's not the best from a performance perspective. But what you'll see here, and we will look at the setup in a little bit, uh, but I have hardware acceleration turned off. So we're gonna go back to a video from your favorite YouTuber that you're not subscribed to, and we're gonna play it. And what you're going to see is that the format that we're using is 4K and everything is streaming properly. This is the video I put out last week. Everything is streaming properly, no problems whatsoever. So at this point, what I did is I came in and I changed the quality down to 480p. And what you'll see here on the left-hand side with this transcoding info is that we are in fact transcoding the video. So you'll see that it's playing, but it's stuttering, it's buffering. So right now it started to play, it stopped, and it's gonna buffer, it's gonna keep playing, and then it's gonna stop right there, there we go. So it stopped again. And if you go to the NAS and you check out the actual performance of it, you're gonna see that the CPU, this is the CPU, the CPU is pegged close to 100% right now. So what's happening is the CPU is transcoding this file and it's just not capable of doing it. Now this is where we get into the situation where not all Synology NAS devices will support hardware acceleration. I will explain why a little later in this video, but this specific device does. So on our NAS, I went in and configured Jellyfin to use hardware acceleration. I have a full written tutorial that will walk through this entire process. So I don't wanna bog down this video with it, but the idea is that we're basically adding the actual device 
to our Jellyfin container, which is so much easier using Container Manager because you can do it all through Docker Compose. But we're adding it to our Jellyfin container so that we can then utilize it inside of Jellyfin when we go to configure. There is some other stuff here. Um, just so you're aware, this is just the media. This is where all of my media exists. So realistically, if you were to copy this entire thing and just change this path here to your media, your Jellyfin container would work, assuming that you have a device that supports Intel QuickSync. But like I said, we'll get to that in a second. So we have it configured. And then on our Jellyfin server, what we're going to do is we're going to select Intel QuickSync. And then these options can be modified depending on whatever uh, processor is in your server. But then we're going to save this. Okay, so then as soon as it saves, what we'll do is we will go back. Okay, so at this point, we have hardware acceleration on, but we're utilizing the GPU. We're playing the exact same video that we played before, but you'll see there's no stutters. We are, in fact, transcoding it. And if we go back to our NAS, you'll see that our CPU utilization is down to 23%. So we're utilizing the GPU in this case, which basically will offload all of the actual processing from the CPU to the GPU. So the CPU will be more efficient and the GPU, which is realistically not being used, will actually be used to transcode this video. So keep in mind, think about what I'm showing you here. We are playing a video in 480p and we're transcoding it, which means that playing the video in 480p was actually harder on the server than playing the video in 4K. So if we go back to 4K here, okay, so we are back to 4K, we're playing the video and absolutely no transcoding is being done. So what I wanna point out, and I think that this is why hardware acceleration is confusing to a lot of people. When you are streaming a YouTube video or you're streaming TV, whatever it is, we, we're in this digital age now where everything is streamed. When you go down in resolution, it's generally better performing. And the reason is because you're generally running into a bandwidth problem. So YouTube is doing all this crazy stuff server side, but on the client side, the biggest issue you'll run into is generally bandwidth related. So when you lower the quality, you're actually lowering the bandwidth requirements so it's easier to stream. When you're transcoding, trying to play a video in 480p in your head might be easier, but on the server side, it's actually harder. So your goal is to direct play, and if that doesn't work, to obviously transcode it. Uh, but transcoding is more efficient with the GPU than it is with the CPU. Now, keep in mind, when I say that, I mean on individual devices. So this DS1019 Plus, it's easier on the system to transcode it with the GPU, utilizing Intel's QuickSync, than it is the CPU. But, but, I want to point this out. That does not mean that it's easier to transcode this video with this GPU than a different CPU. So if you were comparing, if you had two devices and you had Intel's latest i7 processor, using that as an example, versus the Jellyfin server running on your NAS utilizing the, I think it's Intel 600 graphics, whatever it is, there's oh, almost 0% chance that the GPU on the NAS will be better than the CPU on that new latest processor. So when we're comparing this, we're comparing this to the individual device that it is because other devices might have CPUs that will transcode more efficiently with their CPU than with the actual GPU on this device. So for a while, there's been a lot of outrage that Synology devices, newer Synology devices, don't support Intel QuickSync. And it's because they've switched over to AMD and Ryzen processors, which don't have integrated graphics. But the thing that a lot of people leave out, and the first person I heard that said this was a channel called Tech Me Out um, in a DS923 Plus review. But when you're utilizing one of Synology's newer devices that utilize the Ryzen processors, you are actually utilizing ECC memory. So ECC memory is error correcting. I don't wanna get into it because ECC memory is kind of confusing. There's buffered and unbuffered and all different types. And the, the, the important part is that the memory tries to actually resolve issues before writing them to disk. 
So when you're utilizing Intel's QuickSync with an Intel processor, you actually don't have ECC memory. These devices don't have ECC memory. So when you look at it purely from a data integrity perspective, these newer Synology devices are better from a, an integrity perspective, but they're worse only for hardware transcor and worse because they can't do it. So you really have to ask yourself, do I want better data integrity on my NAS or do I want to utilize hardware acceleration? And for most people, the answer should be you want better data integrity. There are still Synology devices that support um, hardware acceleration. The DS423 Plus is one of the best ones that you can use. I think the DS723 Plus can utilize it as well. But the point is that you don't have it available on these newer devices, but it's better for you whether you know it or not that you don't. So let's take a look at what you can actually do if you wanted to add hardware acceleration to your you know, home network without utilizing your you know, new Synology NAS that doesn't support it. Okay, so let's assume that you have a Synology NAS that doesn't support hardware acceleration. And for whatever reason, it's not performing the way that you need it to. So you wanna look into alternative options. There's two main options that I think most people should use. The first is by purchasing something like a Zima board. Uh, the Zima board, the, th the thing with the Zima board is that it's overpriced for what you're getting, if I'm being honest. The benefit to it is that you are really easily able to configure hardware acceleration. So the Zima board comes configured with Casa OS on it. I have created a few videos on Casa OS, but the thing that's nice with it is that you can install Jellyfin or Plex or whatever it is directly through Casa OS. And if you look at the settings, you'll see that it's passing the GPU with QuickSync through to the container. So they're Docker containers and it's configured by default. You would basically purchase this, add your media to it, and then you would just install the Jellyfin or Plex application, or I think they even have MB. Uh, but you'd install it and hardware acceleration would work by default. Okay, so that is the first option. The second option would be to utilize a mini PC. So this is a GMK Tech Nuckbox G3. The benefit to this device is that it is significantly more powerful than the Zima board is. It comes with an N100 processor. Um, it's significantly more powerful and it's cheaper. Purely from a hardware perspective, it is a better overall option. Form factor is a little, it's a little bigger, uh, but purely hardware, it is a better option. Downside is that you have to configure it however you want. So you can install something like Ubuntu Server on it, and then you can install Plex or MB or Jellyfin, whatever you want to use, you can install it directly on here. You can also install Casa OS if you really wanted to on this Nuckbox, and that would work as well. It's just that the compatibility, you might run into some issues. I can't guarantee that you won't. Uh, you might run into some issues because Casa OS is not designed for this specific Nuckbox. It's just a operating system that can be installed directly on Debian-based uh, Linux distributions. Those are two decent options. For transparency, I was sent both of these devices. I'm not telling you you should use one or the other. I'm just saying that they are two options that are relatively inexpensive. We'll say between 100 and 120 US dollars, but they're relatively inexpensive and they'll allow you to utilize QuickSync. If you want to keep the media on the NAS, another thing to mention is that you can mount a uh, folder through SMB and keep the media on the NAS. And then at that point, you would just basically stream it from the NAS to the actual uh, device running your media server. And then you would connect to it through whatever client device you have. That overcomplicates it a little, being honest, because now we're adding a bunch of different devices. But I don't want to give Synology a pass. That is your decision to make. They do offer devices that you can still utilize Intel QuickSync. So if you are in the market for a device and you want it to be a media server first, you might wanna look at the DS423 Plus and just purchase that, say, as opposed to the DS923 Plus, which does not support hardware acceleration. But you're giving up data integrity, flat out R. ECC memory is superior to non-ECC memory from a NAS and data storage perspective. And if all of that doesn't, work for you, try and get the video file to be in a format that your device, your client device can play it in 
directly because then at that point you don't have to worry about transcoding at all and it'll just play it and you won't have any problems whatsoever that is option c d i don't know so like i said i have written instructions for jellyfin and hardware acceleration that i'll leave in the description of the video if you want to configure it and you have a nas that supports it you can follow that tutorial utilizing container manager and it will be configured. If you have any questions though, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.